there's no benefit <laughs> to being thing. over like maybe maybe 31 32 like there's just there's none I, I have to... i'm sorry are you making your first age related complaint oh no i've made i've made many but like i, I took a, I woke up this morning doing one of my favorite things sleeping um <laughs> like yes. a, apparently i got attacked in my sleep i'm like yeah hip hurts and it's like what jesus <laughs> i'm gonna shave my head i can't take this anymore uh so what you're witnessing is the way i wake up every day mm -hmm. i uh i i've I, I don't know how to describe this I, I i didn't throw out my back it's not mm -hmm. that bad i have done that i guess now several times in my life it's terrible but you know i got up not today yesterday with a two days, whatever it was, it doesn't matter, a couple of days ago, with sore back. And I'm like, I, I apparently hurt my back sleeping, you know? And I'm like, this is the third morning in a row, I think, that I've taken aspirin, or not aspirin, like whatever hmm. the stupid pill is, Advil or something, whatever. You just wake it up and take an ecstasy every morning. Yeah, just like, MDMA it's, or something. Just, it's dark, I open the cabinet door, I take whatever is in my hand. <laughs> That's, that is welcome the... to the pandemic. That's Whatever the happens, happens. place. Listen, I just want the day to be a little different than yesterday. Sometimes it's blood pressure medicine. Other times it's vitamin B. You just never it's know. It's like something for the dog's worms. There's like a... <laughs> Paul's now flea and tick preventative for another month. Yeah. Uh, well, after we finished up yesterday and after the bell rung, uh, Intel did a pretty, pretty significant shake up following their announcements that, hey, our chip stuff isn't very delicious. And, uh, I keep it's funny I, as with everything else in life probably but let's just say in tech because that's all we really care about here everything is a debate you know mm -hmm. so in the Intel space with all the stuff that's going on with Intel the debate is well I heard that Intel's 10 nanometer process is just as efficient as TSMC's 7 nanometer process so mm -hmm. I don't see what the problem is and I would just say to you if you believe that that the, you, the problem is Intel just reorged itself <laughs> So you can have whatever opinion you want about the density of nodes or whatever it is you're talking about. But the fact remains, Intel itself has said that it is not doing a good job yeah. and needs to get to seven nanometers and will uh, outsource mm -hmm. it if they have to, to make it happen. But they've just reorged their entire, well, I don't know their entire business, but the entire business that has anything to do with fabricating chips just got reorged. And the guy who was most personally responsible for this mm -hmm. was fired. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. It, it's even even if you could even if there was a valid and legitimate argument that hey, their 10 nanometer is more efficient or better than their 7 nanometer or whatever. There is a a marketing and prestige factor too being able to build smaller stuff at a very consistent rate. And the fact that Intel isn't able to keep on to that path as their competitors, it's a huge marketing loss for them. Yeah, this is two generations of chips where mm. they've been unable to create the more efficient version on their own schedule, which by nature is artificial in its own yeah. internal thing. I mean, um, you know, you have companies like Apple that make uh, conservative public statements about schedules so they can beat them and appear to be heroes. And then you have companies like Intel that just tell you what their actual schedule is and then they miss it and mm -hmm. they look like jerks. So, I mean, there's different ways of doing things, but uh, clearly what Intel is doing is not working. Uh, yeah. What what Qualcomm is doing is they're going to charge your phone faster. Although I have some some mm -hmm. concerns about this. Uh, so it yeah, can, it can do what is it like seventy percent in like five minutes or something like that. Fifty percent in five. Fifty percent in fifteen. Yeah. Now, uh, there's been a lot of concern here. Like, what if I plug an old device into this? Is it going to blow up the battery? Because obviously, one of the problems with fast charging, in case it's not obvious, is heat. Right. So. Right. One of the things that's really kind of special about the way that OnePlus does their proprietary warp charge, which now is available in a wireless uh, format, is mm -hmm. uh, they don't generate a lot of heat, although actually the wireless one does. Um, so the they because they have components in both the phone and the power charger, the power brick, neither one of them gets hot while it fast charges. That's itself a miracle of sorts, right? So Qualcomm makes this thing for the broader industry. And honestly, they're not really... I don't think they're used all that much, but to work properly, you have to have batteries that can handle. I mean, I think there has to be both sides of the equation. It can't just yeah. be the charger. I, right. I assume 
I don't know. But honestly, their marketing document was long because it was a giant graphic in the middle of it. It's not a lot of text there. Mm -hmm. I assume that if you plug a, an old device, an incompatible device, it will just charge normally, right? That yeah, I would you, think so. It would have you can't, to. You can't sell an explosive. <laughs> you know, like you just, right? Yeah. Like I'm gonna go get the fast charger, plug it into my you know three year old Android phone, and mm -hmm. see if I can get it into orbit. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is my bigger concern is that the fastest way to kill a battery is sometimes through like this charge quick charging charge. stuff, and so you got to be careful. Yep. While this is great, sure. um, as of right now, from what we know about batteries and technology and how they work with the lithium ion, like forcing a bunch of current in there real quick which generates mm -hmm. a lot of heat, uh, is one of the faster ways to degrade the life cycle of a battery. So, Let's see if uh, Samsung has a comment about the impact of uh, forcing too much energy into a battery. Too soon? I don't know. I think that one's pretty pretty timely. Yeah, I mean, b batteries are volatile. And, um, mm -hmm. Well, that's why even, uh, even in this fast charge thing that they just announced, you can see a, a hyperscale version of the way that things are charged, right? So... If you have a laptop and it's a normal laptop, it doesn't have fast yep. charging, you plug it into the charger, whatever the wattage is, it doesn't really matter, but it charges for some duration. The first half of it or so will go faster than the second half. It actually slows down over time. Mm -hmm. the, and the, one of the problems with charging is you leave the thing plugged in, and that's actually unhealthy for the battery too. I mean, um, depending on the circuitry, obviously yep. there's ways to prevent that. So this fast charger is doing the same thing. The, like, you know, like I just said, five minutes to 50 but then the next 50 percent takes 10 minutes so it mm -hmm. actually is still half the speed you know it's slowing down so it, it gives you that thing that you want because when you fast charge when you charge the idea is you plug it in you're like i want, I want as much as i can get right now yep and if you could charge for five minutes to get 50 percent, to me that's it could turn off after that who cares that's enough that's great yeah yeah we'll see um it sounds great on paper and so hopefully uh, I'm just it needs. Cool. I think phone makers need to support it. I don't. Yeah. I don't think you're going to walk into a store. I don't think you could do this. Although remember that's see, time that time we went see, to, that. to me, that's the big benefit. It's like you walk in, like you're shopping or whatever, and you're in it the mall. It makes your existing phone better. Yeah. See, I don't think that. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I, I, I don't go into stores, <laughs> but I don't think well, yeah, those that's things true. are out in the well, I mean, I, I guess you'd see it on Amazon or something. Like you and I went to a Qualcomm event one time where they gave us a fast charger. Remember? Mm -hmm. It was like a brick and probably a cable. Yep. I don't. I've never seen something like that at retail. Yeah. I suspect that this is the type of thing you'll get with a phone. It will be a benefit of the phone. You know, this yeah. thing will charge in 15 minutes from zero to a hundred. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's astonishing. Yeah. The really nice that's place nice. to have something like that would be in your car. Now, granted, obviously if you have the phone, because then you get in your car, right? You're going to whatever, drop a little Timmy off at his T-ball game. You just plop your phone right there. That way you can watch Netflix while he's swinging whiffs. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, some people, uh, you know, your commute might be short. You drive to a train station or something or you're mm -hmm. in the car for five minutes or you just yeah, going yeah, up yeah. to whatever it is. You're like, oh, crap, I got to leave the house. I forgot to charge. I never charge my phone overnight anymore, you know, and of course I work from home. So I'm really? not like I'm I do a hero. But it, yes, I literally don't. And uh, the funny thing is, like, uh, this is this is probably doesn't mean anything. It's it's often in my case, the battery is often very well charged when I get up. Right now it's 89 percent, which is crazy mm -hmm. for the morning. Um it's usually not that high, but it's it's often in the 70s, and it, it, obviously it gets charged at some point. Like I'll sit in front of the computer, I have a charger here, sitting on the. It's a wireless charger, mm -hmm. um, but I, I I don't charge it overnight, and I feel like that's probably the healthy thing for the battery, because when I do charge it, I'm kind of aware of it, and I see it, and I'll take it off the thing, you know. Whereas if you leave it on overnight, it's just sitting there overnight, and I don't know. Depending on the circuitry, I guess it could be okay. Yeah, well, at least the very smart iPhones will only charge to 80%, and then they're supposed to, and then it does that last 20% from my, from my phone. Like a trickle charge. At like 6 a.m., so that at 7 a.m. when I pull they're off They're actually there, even smarter than that. They'll actually, yeah, they'll base <laughs> it on your, yeah, see, that's actually really smart. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, they're trying to solve this problem. Like, they've social engineered a solution to a technology problem, or yeah. vice versa. I don't know. Anyway, um Smart. That's smart. Either way, however, yeah. however you want to call it, it's it's still smart. It's just a charging good time. I don't know. I that was bad. Um, so here's a here's an interesting question, Paul. Mm -hmm. If Microsoft had a VPN service, would you use it? Like a consumer one. Uh, um, These are my, all the rage anymore. Yeah, my right. My concern with VPN is speed. Yeah. 
And um, I, I, I probably wouldn't. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I really feel like security, privacy, whatever you want to call this, is 80% common sense. Yeah. You know? And, and you know, I, I, being overconfident maybe is one of the problems that would help you get hacked or something. Mm -hmm. But why do you ask? I don't know. Uh, well, they're Brave launched one. We You see VPN services everywhere. Microsoft has literally all the infrastructure in place to launch a consumer VPN service. They offer it, uh, I believe, on the enterprise side already um, in some capacity. Were there capacity. rumors of this? I, this sounds vaguely familiar, that this was going to be part of that. Remember before the Microsoft 365 consumer stuff happened? Yeah, th I know they've Microsoft has floated around the idea, and I'm just curious. I don't know if it would ever come to market, but it would be a super easy thing to bundle into their uh, Microsoft 365 stuff. Be like, look, you can use yeah. our VPN service if you're already paying us, and then you don't have to pay somebody else. Oh my God, there'd be all these complaints from people like, do you really want your stuff going through Microsoft servers? Well, here's here's the unsavory truth. It probably already is, even if you're not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If anybody's hosting their stuff in Azure, if they're whatever, if you're using Microsoft's content delivery network sure. solution. Anyone so. who's been browsing porn sites using incognito mode or whatever we're calling it is probably up in for some disappointment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on a number of levels. Yeah. The, the real, I think, benefit would be to blocking your ISP from snooping on all your stuff because while it's kind of assumed at this point that Google and the, the web companies are, most people don't consider that their ISP that they pay every single month to use their internet service is also... Uh, harvesting all your little packets as they come across right that's i have a i have a, i know a person i'll just put it that way who is using what i will call a uh, an illegal uh streaming service right they, it's got to be basically raff. no it's not <laughs> and, uh, no you don't know this person and okay. I'm not, don't, don't, do, don't do that it's not that <laughs> but this person is uh it, it, you and you i'll 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 lead people toward the service because you you pay for it you actually mm -hmm. pay for the service it's got to be Russian or something, or it's something crazy international. Yeah, and it has every TV show and movie on it. And so, I asked this person, "Why do you feel you know when you pay? I think you pay month to month, a so one-time payment every month or something like uh, you know out of PayPal or something." And uh, I said, I, "Why do you, you know, how do you feel comfortable doing this? Don't you think your mm -hmm. your ISP is gonna you know know that you're doing this and tell you to stop or you know turn off your service, or whatever?" And they said to me that. What is the difference between this and Netflix as far as the ISP is concerned, right? You're not, it's not like you're downloading. I mean, I download, I, I, I just, I stopped it, but like I was going to download the Master Chief collection on my Xbox. Yeah. hundred and It was either 103 or 130 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. Like what? Um, like for some reason, my ISP has no problem with that. But if I tried to download a movie illegally, mm -hmm. a gigabyte to three gigabytes, uh, they would halt that in a, in a heartbeat, you know? So I guess if you went over a VPN, would that make that kind of service safer, so to speak, from your ISP? Yeah, I, mean, I would never do anything like this. Like, yeah. this just sounds really dicey. Yeah. But you pay for it. Remember that popcorn hour thing? Do you remember that? Yeah, one? I do. That worked out well for those It's guys. like that, except you pay for it. Yeah. Well, so they're, they're in Russia, so what, they don't really have to worry about the law reaching out and, like, arresting yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I don't know. Maybe this is where the Internet's heading, you know? We're all going to be on the dark web. Quantum networking. That's what we talked about on Twitter. The qubits. We're going to send the data. <laughs> well, I just hope the dark web have some Advil so I can not have to worry about this hip pain anymore. Oh, welcome to the rest of your life. It's going to be <laughs> it's, it's a snowball from here, let me tell you. <laughs>